my dear country Nigeria, the best country on this surface of the earth, you can go argue that. This is the country that I have, that I love, and which I live. So we're 61 years this year, uh, independence going on. Uh, many people are still arguing whether we have any reason to celebrate or not. However, we want to still see the way we can build this country to our dreams. At least you and I can do that if we want to. And that's where we're on this journey. This morning, we're talking to two uh, distinguished gentlemen. Uh, one joins us from Abuja and the other from Port Harcourt to take a look at building Nigeria at 61. Uh, in Abuja studios, we have Joseph Hayab, a country director, Global Peace Foundation, Nigeria Reverend. So nice to have you join us on his hub today. All right, we hope he talks uh, in just a moment. Also in our Port Harcourt studios, we have joining us Patience Aselemi, a former aspirant to River State House for Assembly. And to River State House for Assembly. All right. All right. That couldn't be my voice. That couldn't be my voice. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, you see what you did, Sam. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to ratify that. Okay, now this is my voice. We have two resource persons with whom we'll be taking a look at how we can build this country to our taste to our dreams, to the place that we all want to be and see her flourish, as so to speak. Uh, so now let's go straight to Port Harcourt and speak with Patience Aselemi. Patience, um, Nigeria at 61, do you think we have a reason or reasons to celebrate? Yes, we have a reason to celebrate. In fact, so many reasons to celebrate, so many reasons. One of the reasons why we should celebrate is that we, we are independent, we have a nation of our own, we have a country we can say, this is where I come from. We have an identity. And so we have every reason to celebrate. Nigeria is a fantastic country. It's a place anyone in the world would want to be not minding our economic situation today we do hope that with this program i hope nigerians are listening we'll be able to build a better nation one thing i have ever dreamt of is to have a country where i'll be proud to stay back home and, and relax and enjoy myself the kind of freedom we enjoy in this country is unbelievable you can't find that in other nations and so Nigerians are unique, we are talented, God has endowed us with so many gifts, and so I'm proud to be a Nigerian, for Christ's sake. Good morning, Nigerians. Oh, that's sweet. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, patient is still in it. Uh, pleasure having you join us on News Hub. Well, while we're waiting, we can fix um, the, uh, our signals from Abuja. Let's talk some more with you. you. You know, you talk about the image of the country, uh, which I guess represents the vision. And um, you say it's a place you hope you can relax, a place you can go to, uh, because that'll probably be the guiding light in how you design your future, as well as those of you. Those of exactly. Yeah, especially those who also want to be a part of I guess also explains why you decided also to throw your hat into politics at some point in time to contest uh, Sorry, for the right. Assembly. The back. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay, let, let's go ahead. It appears we're having some, um, some hitch here. And, um, let's fix that quickly and then we can then come back. We're on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion from, from Port Harcourt and Abuja on how to build a greater nation. Please stay with us. Here, the controversy ends. Spill out the issues. State the facts. Deal with the fiction. On Head to Head, we say it just the way it is. We cannot play politics with the lives of people. 
the lives of children, the lives of innocent women, the lives of defenseless communities. The bandits mean business. Now they're going to the military schools. They're coming. What are we doing? Why are we waiting? Who is the chief of army staff? President Buhari needs to act now. It is no holds barred. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. Welcome back, and um, we fixed our uh, wahala, and we can get on with the interviews uh, straight ahead. Uh, we're talking about how to build a great nation, our Nigeria 61 uh, series. And um, uh, in Abuja, we have join, joining patient uh, Selimi, who is in Port Harcourt, Joseph Hayab. Joseph Hayab is a country uh, director, Global Peace Foundation, Nigeria. Thank you very much again for joining us, uh, Joseph Hayab. So we have Joseph high up there. Well, good morning once again. Excellent. Well, good morning. Excellent. Excellent, Joseph Hayab. All right, so uh, t tell us uh, first and foremost, we we've spoken just now with uh, patient Aselemi, who has a vision of a country where she wants to go to, relax, and, um, and perhaps build from there. What's your vision of this great country, Nigeria, that you wake up with and then you... Uh, go to bed with, you know, daily. I'm uh, the presenter in the studio to say that I'm also one of those who celebrate Nigeria. The fact is that I'm proud to be a Nigerian. My desire every day in life is that I shouldn't be anywhere than being in Nigeria. Anytime I travel out of this country, I don't intend to stay beyond the days I'm out for what I'm out for than to come back to Nigeria, because Nigeria is a great country. Anytime we talk about Nigeria, we have to look at Nigeria like a family. In every family, you used to have some squabbles, you used to have some quarrels, you used to have some challenges. You have days that they didn't cook food in the house, but the house remains your home. That house remains where you are proud of. You cannot deny your father, deny your siblings, deny other extended relations just because there are issues. So Nigeria is our country. We must be proud of this country. The fact is that everybody must sit up every day and ask or make commitment to what do I do or what can I do to make this country great or what can I do to build this country and make this country an invaluable place. So Nigeria should be a place for all of us to be proud. And there are many things when we look back that we should be proud of about Nigeria. Nigeria have achieved a lot of great things. Nigeria is still achieving great things but like any other country we have our troubles we have our challenges we cannot because of our small troubles and challenges completely renounce and denounce what rightfully belongs to us after all when you go outside this country today you must have to show a passport and the passport you are going to present will not be that country passport it must be nigerian passport so if nigerian passport is your form of identity 
there is nobody, right thinking person that will denounce or refuse his form of identity. Thank you, uh, Joseph Hayab. I have some questions uh, for you, but Hayab, let me see if we can speak with uh, patience as telling me at this point in time. All right, patience. At some point, you, yeah, you decided to vie for political office, I and one would wonder why. Why? Sorry, I, I really can't get you As at some point, you, you vied for uh, elective office in the country. You wanted to be uh, you're a former aspirant to the River State House of Assembly. Why did you vie at that time? Yes, because I also want to contribute my quota. You see, like the other speaker from Abuja said, we want to look at Nigeria as one big family. Everybody has something to contribute. We all have something upstairs. Because looking at this nation, the truth be told, we need capable hands that can run our economic system. We need to make laws and sustain them. It is not enough making laws, but when we make these laws, how far do we go to see these laws being implemented? These are the areas I really wanted to deal with when I intend coming to, when I, fight for the political office. Actually, what also motivated me to run for that political office was that I had served before as a councillor, and I saw a lot of loopholes in governance. And I think I have a lot to do, a lot of work. A true Nigerian will tell you the pains we feel in this country, we need the right persons. We need people who have vision, we need people who have understanding of the times that we are living in to be able to bring us out of this mess. Honestly, this morning, kind of, I'm a Bible scholar, but this morning, somebody you know, raised something and it triggered something inside of me. The person read from the book of Nehemiah chapter four. What was the problem? In Israel, they had a problem. The walls were broken down. And Nehemiah saw it and was pinned inside and felt, I must go back home and build the walls of my country. And I think that is one of the reasons why I vied for the political office. I also needed to contribute my quota. I needed to lend my voice. And if, if, even if it means me giving my strength, my physical strength, I will do so if it's enough to correct the ills of our society today. And so it's a thing of worry when things are not working the way they ought to work. And that's the reason why I vied for that political office. Thank you. And, and, and you know, patients, the discussions we've been having on Nigeria 61 series uh, since um, and before the uh, Independence Day anniversary ha have centered on a number of um, issues, education, health, governance. But one thing people have pointed fingers at has been the bane of this country's on the development has been poor uh, leadership. Uh, a lot of people are unanimous in their thinking that leadership hasn't exactly lived up to its game in how it should deliver the so-called dividends of democracy or even of nationhood. Well, what will you say in your, in your, in your perspective uh, has the, the, number one, the number one goal or strategy for you in achieving this vision or this image of Nigeria you want to be? Uh, what will be that first thing that you would want to fix? Well, the truth is my number one goal would be let us sit on the round table again. We can talk over and over again about the problems, but how do we fix the problem? How do we get the solution? Now, I also love a particular channel I watch so much, C uh, I watch CTTN so much. And I looked at how did China come out of poverty? How did they come out to become an industrial nation? These are the areas I looked at. And I said, we need to keep talking. We need to keep lending our voices to those who care to listen. But again, one of the challenges we have in this country is the problem with tribalism. It's a problem with godfatherism. It's the problem with who knows who and who knows what. If you do not know anybody that is in power, you, can't, you cannot be given the chance. And that is a big lacuna. For example, if somebody has a better idea to bring to the table, why not allow that person come to governance? Why not give that person a chance? 
that person might just be the solution we need. That might just be one of the keys to bring us out of poverty, to bring us out of this economic mess that we found ourselves. Honestly, I don't have any other country. This is the country I have. And Nigeria is 61. Just tell me, my, 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 my brother, a 61-year-old man or woman, is this still a baby? That person must have been a grandfather or a grandmother. And so we need to do things right. We need to do away with, oh, I'm from Hausa, oh, I'm from Yoruba, oh, I'm from uh, Igbo, oh, I'm from the South South. We need to do away with that. We need to look at Nigeria holistically as our own country, as our base. How do we better it? What are those things that are not in place? How do we fix this country? I was telling somebody, we were discussing, and I said to the person, I said, listen, if we want to fix this country, we can fix this country. It takes our self-will, our self-determination to say, this is what we want to achieve. Until we identify our problems and begin to talk about them and begin to work towards achieving those things that will help us build a better nation, we will not get there. But I believe that someday we'll get there. I have not lost hope in this country. I have not. Whether there's insecurity, whether there's hunger, whether there's poverty, I don't care about that. But I know that someday Nigeria is going to come out of this mess and it will take the right head. My prayer every day is, oh God, bring to us leaders who have feelings for this country, who have love for this country, who would want to go the extra mile to ensure that things are done the right way. If we have such leaders, if we have people like that in, in governance, then we'll be tilting towards the right direction. Otherwise, what we have today, honestly speaking, it is not encouraging, but it's our country, we won't throw it away, we will not abandon it, we'll remain here and we'll fix it. Thank you. I, 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 thank you so much, Patience. I, I think we're on the same boat, and I want to imagine that uh, most Nigerians, if not all, should be on the same boat because this is first and foremost our country. Even for those who have dual, dual citizenship, I always tell them, if you hold a, another citizenship of a, of a country uh, where they are predominantly not in our, of our color, they will tell you straight up, you're African, first and foremost, and they can narrow it down to the fact that you are a Nigerian. All right, thank you, Patience. Now let's go to Abuja and speak with uh, Joseph Hayab. Uh, you, you hear a lot of Nigerians talk passionately about this country. And when you look around you, look at even the, the, multinational, the multilateral organizations that you have across the world, see how Nigerians are holding sway, uh, leading and leading very well. And so you ask yourself, what is wrong with us when we talk about uh, uh, domestic affairs? How come we still are struggling at 61? Uh, you see, we are struggling because some very key things we need to do, we are not doing them. There are contributions by Nigerians that may not be as big as those who are contributing at the UN or others, but that is what keeps Nigeria moving, and we must begin to appreciate them. How much do we understand and appreciate the contribution of those who sweep our roads? How much do we understand and appreciate the contribution of those who serve us in our hospitals? How much do we understand and appreciate those who teach our children in school? How much do we understand and appreciate those who sell in our markets? How much do we understand and appreciate those who do those menial jobs? The mechanic, the carpenter, the artisans, and you can name them. If I want to name them, we'll take all the days here naming the different groups. So this is where we need to begin to appreciate the contributions of Nigeria and take it from that level. I quite appreciate some of the things I had patients saying, but you see, you must not be a legislator, you must not be in the executive, you must not be the chief of police to contribute to Nigeria. You can contribute in those small ways. So when we are looking at how to build a greater nation, we must begin to appreciate the contribution of those tiny people. And because th their contribution is not recognized, their contribution many times is not appreciated, that's why they do things that even if those in power want to improve, they may not get the support of the man down because the little contribution he's making is not. It is only in this country that someone who has never done anything for us, who have not even contributed to the the progress of society just because he holds political power then we begin to celebrate him and begin to give him awards and begin to sing praises of him and if he is there he cares he never cared about our road yesterday he never cared about the absence of teachers in the school yesterday but just overnight because his friend is 
president and appoint him as minister and we call him that he is the one uh, building Nigeria. No, you can build Nigeria not necessarily by being a minister. You can build Nigeria not necessarily by being in the Federal House of Representatives. You can build Nigeria not necessarily by being a governor. You can build Nigeria not necessarily by being a commissioner or being in high offices. So when the contributions of Nigerians are beginning to be appreciated, you will see the result. More Nigerians will be patriotic. More Nigerians will want to submit. But the issue is that because at home we don't appreciate those little contributions. We are only looking for those people who are now in the WTO. We are looking for those who are in African Development Bank. We are looking for those who are working in the UN. We are looking for those who are in ECOWAS. So everybody begins to feel that, okay, since my contribution is not being appreciated, there's nothing I can contribute to nation building. The only way I can contribute to nation building is until I go to the top. And so people do evil and people begin to destroy things to get to the top so that they will be celebrated or appreciated. So I want to to suggest that if we really want to build a greater nation, why don't we begin to look down and see those little contributions, celebrate those ones that are contributing from the local scene, and help them to see that what they are doing is making impact. Nigerians are feeling the impact. Then more people will be willing to do. So when you grow from such level and become a higher, a wholly higher office, then you will do it more. But honestly speaking, to my mind, most of those who go up there. We only celebrate them because we want to get some largesse of what their office yeah. gives them. But really, what is the impact locally? We cannot connect because we don't understand the role those locally are contributing. So those in power understand that every Nigerian has a role to play. You are only privileged to be up there, but those ones down here also are playing their role. Appreciate them so that they will know that their role is not being looked down upon, is not being ignored, is appreciated. Then they will begin to contribute more. Uh, the reason why we find things not working around us is how many local people in the community are willing to give information to the security agencies because of the security situation of their community? How many people out there are driving on the street and they saw something that can be dangerous to the next passenger will stop and pick it? They are even afraid for their lives, so they won't stop and pick it. So when we talk about nation building, those tiny things are the things that make a nation great. But those tiny things are not being observed in Nigeria. So most time, people don't feel there's anything they will do. Everybody believes until he goes to the top. You can build this nation by using the people at the grassroots. Mm, very well said. Uh, uh, Reverend Hayab, uh, something I, I, I picked from what you're saying, um, that all politics is local and uh, we're essentially community. Even, even the high-income countries, um, the cottage industries and the rest of them, that's what, is what has made up. Something patients also refer to with the Chinese um, uh, story of, of, of nationhood. But even if you had a design, you had uh, something to put up, uh, a master plan, or you had uh, the image of the city you're trying to create, you'd need master craftsmen to be able to put into uh, play the things which you have put on the ground. The Nigerian dream, the Nigerian vision, the Nigerian master plan, um, what are your thoughts in terms of those whose responsibility it is to um, gather the draftsmen, gather the people who are supposed to make things work? You think they've been responsible enough? You think that um, we're not getting the right, the right craftsmen in being able to, to make this Nigeria of your dream and our dream happen, uh, Reverend Hayab? Yeah, when you look at many Nigerians, and especially those who are in higher offices, you will agree with me that when they were not in office, they speak about our togetherness. When they were not in office, they speak about unity. When they were not in office, they see Nigeria south, east, west, north as Nigeria. But the moment they become or they get into office, they now begin to segment, they now begin to segregate, they now begin to talk about region, they now begin to talk at, uh, about some forms of identity. So I think this is the area where we get it wrong. We really need a leader who can galvanize, mobilize, and live with everybody. Because this country belongs to us. It's not just for those who are privileged to be in office. This country belongs to all of us. And there is a contribution that every Nigeria, every Nigeria, I mean it, every Nigeria, including those who do not have degrees, including those who may have not been privileged to go to school, including those who do not have houses in the city, including those who do not have voices to speak. But there is something they can contribute. So when we have leaders who can now sit and look at, oh, this is my master plan, but I cannot execute this master plan without other fellow Nigerians. How do I involve them? How do they take ownership of this plan? And then how do I even in the first place 
encourage them to accept that this plan belongs to them. When we have such leader, and that's the kind of leader I'm praying Nigeria will have in the nearest future, a leader who will not come to load it over the people, a leader who will not come and think other people do not come, a leader who will not come and feel that all others do not uh, do not know anything, a leader who will come and say, hey, wait a minute, you on the street, come. This is an opportunity for you to contribute your quota. You in the ghetto, come. This is an opportunity for you to contribute your quota. You in the university, come. You also have a place here to contribute your quota. Everybody be begin to see that there is a place for him. There is a role for him. There is where he can contribute. There is what he can do. Even that thing he assumed he does not know how to do, he knows how to do it now. Then things will begin to change. That is when nation building will be a nation. Because it is about patriotism. Everybody is involved. Everybody is taking ownership. Everybody is on board. The man who is higher, the man who is in the middle, the man who is down there, believes that we are all one, we are the same. I do have peace with priests that human beings are members of one family under God. And when you, anytime I come to the studio, I try to remind people that unless and until we begin to see ourselves as members of this one Nigerian family, one united Nigerian family, because let's look at our motto, unity in diversity. When we know very well that we have many tribes in Nigeria. We know very well that we are from different areas in Nigeria, but we want to see unity in this, our diversity. When we work with it, take advantage of the gifting. This country is so blessed. The fact about it that until you walk on the street and meet some Nigerians, just stop and watch what they are doing. You will wish that leaders will know what these ones are doing and give them opportunity and they will exploit. But nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to give them space. Every day they are just saying, okay, I'm not being considered. I do not belong. But truly speaking, I want to encourage Nigeria, don't allow that spirit to demoralize you. Be hopeful that you have a role to play in this country and come out, show what you can do, do the best you can. If you don't have the man in Asorot, help the man in your local, local government of what, help the man somewhere because helping them is helping Nigeria. Anything you do, as tiny as you may look at it, but it's part of what has made other great nations of the world who they are. No, we need leadership to achieve that. But sometimes if the leadership is not giving us opportunity, can we go ahead and help? I think I don't even wait for a leader to tell me that there's something dangerous on the road. I should clear it. I don't need to wait for a leader to, to think that uh, even men are trying to take over our community. I need to raise concern. I need to work with other people in the community for us to achieve peace. So even Nigerians start contributing their quota in their small way, in their local environment. I can tell you that it will be really force those at the top to now begin to see the need to connect with the down so that there will be synergy and then together we can get, get success. All right, thank you so much, Joseph Hayab. Now let me come to you, Patience and Salemi, and Joseph, we're talking about how we all can participate and make sure that this country gets to the point where we would say we're proud of this country. Let's talk about citizens' uh, participation, especially women. Do you think that uh, women that have been given the opportunity to serve at the, in, uh, in the different uh, uh, capacities in the country, have they done justice to what uh, would be expected of a woman to do? Uh, you know, there's always the saying that when you put anything in the hands of a woman, it should always grow. So what's your view? Well, <clears throat> my view is women at some point were not given opportunity. When this came up and women started participating, I believe that the women also understand that their role in nation building is enormous. And so some of them came up and did very, very well. I give that credit to them. Uh, women like Dora Kuyili, women like uh, Konje Wala, name them, their likes. They did theirs, they contributed enormously to the development of this country. But permit me to digress a little bit. I have one pain in my heart that, you know, prompted me to say I must be in this program this morning. And one of that reason is this. Let us begin to look at our economic status. What can we do to improve on our economy? Believe you me, we are blessed. But how much of these blessings have we been able to harness to build our nation? It baffles me, it beats my imagination that up till now we are still importing fuel. It's crazy. I expected 
that by now in the South South, the modular refineries would have taken place for us to build our local refineries, encourage our local dwellers, just like Reverend Yahab just said, that the little contributions from the people you think doesn't really matter, they matter in nation building. We all are contributing. Now, if we build these modular refineries, it will solve the problem of suits. Today, we are complaining of suits in the South. It will solve that problem. The modular refinery will create employment. The modular refineries will put, we, we, we employ more women, especially the ones who are not well educated. They can do a lot of menial jobs. These are the areas I want us to look at as a nation. We have so much resources that we've not been able to harness them. And then we allow other nations come, take what we have, go to their place, refine it, bring it back to us, and we buy it at a higher cost. For Christ's sake, how long are we going to live like this? We need to come out of this. Now we have the Adjokuta Steel Complex. What have we been able to do with it? What have we done? We've trained engineers, but it's not enough. Let us go back again. That's why I say we, we keep coming back to the drawing board. Where are we not getting it right? How do we fix it? Those are the things I think we should be talking about in Nigeria at 61 and how to build a greater nation. Now look at it. We have steel, we have coal, we have all manner of mineral resources, but they remain untapped. They remain untapped. So how do we build our nation? We are crying the economy is hard, or there's no food. Even look at the agricultural sector. We have so much land in this country, we can farm, but yet we're importing rice. Even though we've been able to groom our local, you know, farmers to, to, to farm rice, it is still not enough. How come we're still buying a bag of rice for as much as Nigerian rice, as much as 25,000? In our own country, it is not proper. So there's something that we need to do that we've not done. And that's my pain this morning. That's the reason why I came here. I came here to tell Nigerians, believe in yourself. Don't wait for the foreigner. Believe in what you have inside. Bring it out. Encourage that child that is showing that trait of being an engineer. Encourage that child to grow. Look around your environment. There are indigent children. Bring them up. The ones you can nurture. They must not be your biological children. No, a thousand times no. Nurture them. Look at characters of children within your domain and begin to build on them. It's part of nation building. Just like uh, Reverend said, you must not be a senator, a governor, or a president to, 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 to contribute to your quota. I quite agree with him. In our little corner, there are things we can do. Those little things that doesn't that we don't think they matter, they really matter a lot. So we need to look at ourselves again. Look inward. Ask yourself, as a Nigerian, what do I have inside? What can I bring to the table? How do I help this country? If they train you to be a medical doctor, please practice very well. Practice it. Help the people. I mean, we still have, at a time like this, doctors are still going on strike for Christ's sake. What is it? What's that? All right. All right, thank, we thank want you. our personal gains. Yes, of course, the workman must get his wages. Right. I agree with them. Thank you. But thank again, you. what are you putting on the table? Thank you very How much. How do you want Nigeria, Nigeria to grow? Thank you very much. It's a rhetorical question, uh, uh, patient Asilemi. Uh, Reverend Hayab, um, as we bring the discussion to a close, and uh, I wish we could go on and on, but um, these sort of discussions must have a beginning mm -hmm. and have a, a termination point. Maybe the person is a, we share the collective pain, uh, pains of, of patients also too. Maybe the person is a, a clairvoyant, maybe he's schizophrenoid, he, be, he says one thing and believes another thing, or magician, you know, or, 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 or fate healer in saying that um, you say one thing about how, how this country can be great, but when he gets or she gets elected into office, they realize that the money they will require for this project of greatness doesn't exist on paper. 
They have no idea how it's going to come, but yet they still tell you that we are going to be heading towards Mount Zion at the end of the day. Do you think that people, get, people need to say the truth and be frank and blunt about exactly where we are as a people and not give people expectations and hopes that they know that can never happen in their lifetime? Yeah, thank you very much for that uh, good question. I think the problem with our country is leaders don't communicate with the followers. So leaders try to say what they know sincerely within themselves that is not workable, it's not practicable, and then it becomes a lie. I think we should be truthful to one another. Gentlemen, we have 10 roads out here, and we need to fix them. But the money we have can fix the first two. Can I start with two? And I'm starting this year with the first two. Next year, we'll go for the second two. The third year, we'll go for the next two. The other ones that we have not gotten their roads started, will be hopeful because they see that roads have started. But once you lie to the 10 groups that you are going to construct the 10 roads, and you don't have the resources to even do one, then you are misleading the people. And that's why people can, in their lack of understanding, accuse government and say things. Or two, you just come scattered or destroy every road that you want to control, but you don't have resources to even complete one. Why don't you just do with one? and then let people see the example you have shown them in the first road and know that hopefully next year it will be their turn. Have you seen the way contracts are given in Nigeria? Contractors are, allow, are given jobs to construct a road for 14 months, for 18 months, but they end up constructing such roads for 36 months or for even 54 months. Why? Because somebody out there is deliberately delaying the process so that after the months have elapsed, they will now go to revalidate the contract and probably add more money. There was this time, because I always want to use examples of things people know, that Nigerians, are, there was a need to upgrade the Abuja airport. And so flights were diverted to Kaduna. And the Federal Ministry of Works told us that they are going to quickly repair Kaduna route, fix the route so that people can now come to Kaduna and move to Abuja. If you listen to the figure that was used for that road renovation and go back to that road six months after that figure, you will leave for Nigeria. You will Over not believe time. that this is our country. So this is the whole problem we have that we don't take. Some of the roads, if you fly them in Nigeria, they will tell you that they are under renovation or by FEMA. FEMA. Look at what happened. You even see signboards. But the reality is that those roads are not being renovated. Reverend Hayam, uh, I can imagine that we can go on and on talking about all the challenges we're faced with as a people in this country, especially uh, in this our journey towards building a better uh, country for ourselves. Uh, but I want to thank because that's how much we'll be able to take this morning on News Hub. Reverend um, Joseph Hayab, the country director, Global Peace Foundation, Nigeria. I want to thank you so much for joining us from Abuja this morning. Thank you very much. And yeah. also, <laughs> we thank you. And also in Port Harcourt, we've been speaking with Patience Aselemi, former aspirant to River State House of Assembly. I, I know you're coming back on this show because there's still so much we have to talk about, okay? Thank you so much for being part of the program today. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. All right, and to all of the resource persons that have joined in today on the program, and to you especially for joining and being part of the show, we won't take it for granted. We thank you for being uh, with us every day of the week on News Hub. And that's the program today. How do you intend to contribute your own quota to the development of Nigeria and not just acting like Andrew or Andrea who may want to check out of the country? Contribute your own quota. This is not the best country for this earth. I wish my pigeon can be as good. Yeah. Well, let's go continue to do good and build our nation. I am sure we did it. I am our Obobo. So, yes, uh, Spasiba. So, we to speak, paka. speak your dialect for once. Spasiba. Paka, paka. See you guys tomorrow. Huh? <laughs>